Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord, that this day that represents the birthing of a nation. Father, a freedom that came to a, to a land and to a people to freely worship you, God. And Lord, we lift our hands to you and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you came to save us. You came to set us free. You came to allow us, Lord, to worship you and to worship you freely. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that this nation was birthed by grace. The tyranny, the law, the imprisonment. Father, in Jesus' name, no matter how wayward our nation goes, no matter how crazy at times it becomes, I thank you that your hand is on this nation and your hand is, a, is upon its people. Lord, this morning I pray for churches, for pastors, for leaders here and around the world. Father, I pray that your presence will fill every sanctuary, that your presence will fill every heart, no matter where they gather, in homes, in rooms, in synagogues, in sanctuaries. Lord, no matter where they gather, in buildings or in restaurants, Lord, wherever two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that you fill every heart and every life with the sound of freedom. Father, I pray for those that have gathered together here with us this morning, for those that have gathered in their homes or in their rooms that are watching us this morning online. Holy Spirit, I ask you to have your way I ask you to have your way in this gathering, in this conversation. Father, Father, be exalted. Lord, be lifted up. Jesus, you said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Lord, our responsibility is to lift you up. And we honor you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we honor you. We honor you on this day, Lord. We honor you. This is the day that you've made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we honor you. We honor you. Lord, we honor you on this day. We honor you on this first day of the week, this day that belongs to you, Sabbath. We worship you. We honor you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I ask you to touch every life, Lord. I ask you to touch every life. Every life, Lord. Every life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you just lift your hands to him, please, just for another moment. And just begin to worship him. Begin to thank him. Let your heart just express your gratitude to Him. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. I worship you. I ask you to have your way. Holy Spirit, come. 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 As I'm, uh, as I'm praying this, I want to...
Just continue to pray, please. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your presence, Lord. I thank you for your presence. And Lord, I pray that as I release this word from Ezekiel 12, Lord, I ask that it be for every single person, Lord, who is needing this word. You're placing this word on my spirit, even though I don't understand the fullness of it. But I know, Lord, that you're bringing it to pass. I ask you to open our eyes to perceive in the Spirit, God, to open our ears to hear what your Spirit is saying, to expand our hearts, Lord, that you would fill our hearts with more of you. God, you know our intentions. Lord, you know our motives. Lord, you know everything about us. Be glorified, Lord, be glorified, even in this word, Lord, even in this word, be glorified. That you would, Lord, right now, Lord, prepare the hearts of the people that need to hear this word, God. They need that word in in season because they're weary, Isaiah said. You sat with the woman at a well and you gave her a word in season because she was weary. Lord, I pray that this word will speak life to every man, every woman who is weary. And may it come alive inside of them. Jesus, you said this, the words that I speak are spirit and life. Let your spirit, Lord, let your life flow through us. Ezekiel chapter 12, if you have your Bibles or your Bible on an an app, I released this word, I, I, I received this word last week, actually a little over a week ago, a dear pastor friend of mine that I shared with you, Ezekiel chapter 12. And for those of you that are watching online, I, I, will, I will share this word and share for a few minutes and then I will say goodbye. But we will, I will record the message in fullness and you'll be able to watch it later. But if you have your Bibles, please go to Ezekiel chapter 12 and this wonderful man of God, a dear friend, called me just a little over a week ago that I hadn't heard from in years. And he said, the Lord woke me up at three this morning. And I would begin to pray for you. <clears throat> and he had no idea and, and still doesn't. We played phone tag and finally we, we connected and he started to speak this word and I feel so strong about it this morning I'm literally trembling on the inside and I pray that it's as much for you as it is for me Ezekiel 12 verse 21 and the word of the Lord came to me saying son of man what is this proverb that you that you people have about the land of Israel which says The days are prolonged and every vision fails. Tell them therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will lay this proverb to rest and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, the days are at hand and the fulfillment of every vision. 
For no more shall there be any false visions or flattery divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord. I speak the word which I speak. The word, I'm sorry, let me go back. For I am the Lord. I speak and the word which I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed in all your days. He says, O rebellious house, I will say the word and perform it, says the Lord God. So many of us, if you'll remain standing please for a moment, so many of us have been waiting, have been waiting, we've been waiting for God to fulfill, we've been waiting for God to do something. When he, when this wonderful prophet released this word to me, I I just I, I was I remember I was on I four and I was just I was driving and I just began to weep because he had no idea. But I believe with all of my heart that as he spoke these words to me and I have literally sat and soaked in this word. I believe that it is so timely for all of us, for all of you that are watching that what we have felt for so long that has been prolonged. Lord, when will it come to pass? The days are at hand. And the fulfillment of every vision Father, I pray in Jesus' name. I feel your presence. I feel the trembling within me. I didn't expect this. But Father, I just lift up every single person who is waiting for a vision, for a dream, for a word to come to pass. Lord, all of us, all of us have been waiting. All of us have believed for something more, for some breakthrough, for some miracle, for some relief. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we come into agreement right now for everyone in this room, for everyone that is watching, for anyone that needs to hear this word from your scriptures. Lord, would you even speak to them? God, would you even draw them, bring them to this moment, Lord, even if they're, whatever they're doing, Lord, that they would even come online in an unexpected time, or, or the feed would come up, Lord, and they would listen to this, God, because they need this word. And it will literally, God, cause the earth beneath them to shake. Lord, all of us have something in mind, in the heart, Lord, that we are believing for. Some have waited so many years. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, and we pray, Father, in agreement. Lord, that the visions and the dreams and the words that have been spoken by you, to each and every person, God, that this is the time. Lord, that they'll no longer be delayed. Lord, dreams and visions and businesses and ministries, God, that they'll no longer be delayed. But in accordance to your word and in accordance to your timing, God, that you will bring it to pass. For unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think.
God, would you open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the more that you desire to do according to the power that works within us. You said, no, no eye has seen, no, nor ear has heard. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. Father, we lift our hands to you. We lift our hearts to you. We give you our hearts, we give you our wills, we give you everything. We surrender all to you. We yield all to you. Lord, bring it to pass. Lord, bring it to pass. Bring it to pass. Bring it to pass. Not my will, but your will be done. Father, I pray that in these coming days and in these coming weeks. Lord, today we celebrate the birthing of a nation. On July 4th, 1776, Lord, I pray that there will be the birthing and the fulfillment of dreams and visions. Lord, I thank you. Would you just lift your hands to him and just begin to receive that word? If that, if that word is speaking to your life, would you just now receive it and tell the Lord, I receive it, Lord. I receive everything that you have for me. I receive your timing. I receive your will, not mine. I receive it, God. I receive it, God. I receive it. Oh, God, that it would just honor you in every way. Lord, that my life would honor you in every way. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I ask you to bless those that have blessed and come and stood by me along the way. Would you wrap your loving arms around them, God? Would you bless them? Would you bless them? Would you bless them? Would you bless them? None of us would be where we are. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. And all of God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. He's a good God, isn't He? He's a good God. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining us just for the next few minutes. Um, I want to just it is it is awesome to see all of you here this morning wow ah it's so good you know it's always like these these holidays that you know people don't come to church i'm so grateful that you guys did it is so good to see you and um Thank you to all of you guys that are watching online. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for for praying. And I, I'm, I'm, we're going to do this a little bit different today. In just a moment, I'm going to go offline. And I just want to encourage you. Um, <laughs> you got a verse? Is it a verse about hell or death or anything like that? No, come on. I'm kidding. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Tanai. Okay, and what what are you going to read us? By the way, this is now begin. This is a norm, and I think there's a little preacher. I'm a little bit like insecure about <laughs> my job, but I think I've got a few years yet. All right, what are you going to read for us? John three fourteen through nineteen. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believing in him should not perish but have the everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Was that it? Yeah. Father, we thank <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's usually what everybody's response is when I finish preaching. It's like, are you done? And I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Um, Father, I thank you for your hand upon this precious life. Lord, I thank you for what you are establishing already. For the voice that will be heard in her generation. God, I thank you for the boldness for this this voice will be heard with a boldness. I thank you that your word is taking root inside of her. She is and will be a very powerful vessel for your kingdom. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your hand on her life, on her brother, on her family. I thank you, Jesus. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Love you. And remember that when you make it big, you tithe to Sam Hen. I'm kidding, kidding. Sam Hen just wants to be around to hear her preaching the word. Um, so, so here's what we're going to share and then I'm going to go offline. So, um, but I will, I will, I'm going to preach this message and then I will, will upload it a little bit later. Um, so I want to just take a moment. Yeah. Um, so the, what, what you're going to hear in, in a little bit when we, when I come back and preach it to you, I, I want to just our discussion today is going to be about friendship and so um but but the reason i want to do this very differently is because i i really want for those of you online to really hold on to that ezekiel 12. and i pray that as as i say goodbye to you for now in just a moment i i pray that you will latch on let let your heart latch on to that to those verses from verse 21 to 25 and, and just throughout this week, just go back and revisit and revisit and revisit and declare that promise over your life. It, it, it is amazing to me as I think about this. I have not, I have not heard that man's voice it, for years. His name is Bishop Lewis Jones. And he and I had been, have been friends for many, many years. But for years and years and years, I had not heard. And the day that he called me with that promise was the day that I needed to hear a word from God. And God, and, and this is why the, the message that you guys will hear and that you'll hear in just a few moments is on friendship, true friendship. Because Jesus placed a tremendous value on relationships and as I said the older you get your circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller and I want to look at this subject matter from a biblical perspective on how how do we identify what are the genuine and I hear the, that's why I add this word what are the genuine markings of a true friend and there are stories throughout the Bible of great friendships and the one that we're sort of going to look into just a little bit today is the relationship with Jonathan and David and and I think as we sort of walk through this word all the scriptures that will is to find a friend you have to be a friend and that's actually a proverb. And uh, so many of us want friends, but we don't know how to be a friend. 
And that's why I want to dive into it, because if Jesus placed such a great value on these on relationships, then I don't want to waste my time, especially the older I get, with relationships that I'm not supposed to invest in because there'll be no return. Does that make sense? And that's why when you look at Jesus's life, as he, from the gathering into the upper room and all the inv invitations to the time that he hung on the cross, his circle got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then when he hung on the cross and he looked out, there's John. Where were all the others that he poured his life into? So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that in these next few moments, God, that you would release your word to our heart. And, Father, as we in this gathering begin to have a conversation, I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, that every, every heart that shares will speak life into this very atmosphere. And for those that have joined us here this morning online, I ask you right now, Lord, to bless them. And that, Father, when they watch this message later at some point throughout the week, God, I ask you just to speak into their life. But until then, Lord, would you just let them now just sit in that word out of Ezekiel 12? Would you just let them now receive that word, God? Open their hearts up to receive more of that word, that more of that revelation and fill their heart with faith to believe you, to believe your promises in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. I will be back, not like, again, just, it'll be, the message will be up later.